All right, so this is my first impressions of the AccuFace E5000 integrated M from Japan. Um, we just uploaded the unboxing uh, video, which we didn't actually unbox. You can watch the link below. Hi everyone, if you've been enjoying our videos recently, I have a favor to ask you. Uh, please like and subscribe to our channel, and there's a reason why. Uh, some of you may not know, but all the funds that we receive from YouTube who've been very generous to us, we match and we donate all the funds to charity. It's our way of giving back to the community at large, and you can help us. So all you have to do is click the subscribe button, like it, and if you have friends, share it with them, and uh, it will go to a really good cause. <coughs> Um, some of you may know if you watched the last uh, couple of videos that in December uh, we were able to write a really big check uh, to the Salvation Army and I'm very very proud of all of you and, and ourselves to be able to do that and for 2004 I'd like to see if we can donate hundred and fifty thousand dollars to charity that's a big number but I think we can do it so with your help let's do uh, let's do that and help people who cannot help themselves. Again, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. So a couple of uh, tech things first, and then we'll go into the actual details. The AccuFace E5000 is essentially their top of the line, most powerful integrated amp. They also make a class A version. This is a class AB. It's rated at uh, 240 watts per channel into eight, and um, 320 watts into four ohms. Um, and it's 20,000 US dollars, uh, sorry, Canadian dollars. I'm told by a, a viewer that it's about 19,500 or 19,000 US dollars. There's also the option for either a phono stage or um, a DAC uh, slot, uh, modules. They just slot in the back. Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to go with the tech specs. My first experience with AccuFace came in the early 90s where I physically had a chance to play with some. It was actually the M1000 monoblocks rated at 1000 watts into 8 ohms and something like 1600 watts into 1 ohm and the matching preamp. For the life of me I can't remember the uh, model of the preamp now. I loved it. It was set up in one of my clients homes with the big top of the line Genesis 1 speakers at the time, so four, um, uh, four enclosure speakers with separate woofer towers, separate mid-range high frequency towers. He was using the M1000 to drive the mids and the highs because the woofers had their own amplifier. The sound was just absolutely exquisite. It, it was um, powerful, it was tangible, it floated an image that was life-size, that had depth, it was just wonderful. Um, Subsequently, many, many years later, the client upgraded to a whole bunch of top-of-the-line Macintoshes, and so I helped, I helped him sell the electronics to uh, another gentleman who also lives in Ontario. And then recently, I guess a few years ago, that, that same gentleman contacted me. He was uh, downsizing, so I helped him sell the electronics to somebody else. I can't remember who, who bought it. <coughs> but after all these years, as far as I know, the units are still uh, working properly. Uh, in, in great shape and uh, so that uh, will go into one of the things about the uh, under the good category. I'm going to call this video uh, part one and it's a tale of two integrated amplifiers. We have about 150 hours now with this uh, integrated amp. I've been uh, feeding it a signal from a streamer and just constantly playing it even when we're not, uh, not in the store. And I periodically would, would go check it out and, and see what it sounded like and for the most part was quite impressed. Then this morning I came in at 3 o'clock, uh, brought the integrated amp into our uh, room, hooked it up with the Wilson Sasha V's. <coughs> the source is uh, Lumen P1 acting as a streamer <coughs> and the uh, uh, output, digital output, uh, went into the MSB discrete DAC. So basically all top-notch stuff wiring, um, uh, mix of Nordos and AudioQuest. And uh, so then I, I let it warm up for 30 minutes. So by the time it was all done, it was about four o'clock or maybe 3.30 and I started listening. So first impressions, um, I'm gonna check my notes because there's a whole bunch of stuff and I don't want to um, miss anything. Very impressive, dynamic, punchy, clear and articulate. Uh, with very good, well, with good sound stage and imaging, and it certainly had a good visceral uh, punch. Here's what I didn't like 
again, first impressions, it sounded a bit harsh. Uh, not like terrible, but it was certainly obvious uh, with, with certain frequencies, with sibilants. It wasn't sibilant, but it was harsh. Um, and again, not so bad that it was terrible. It was just there. It was pronounced. Um, and I was quite honestly shocked because I didn't expect it to. As a matter of fact, I expected it to sound smooth. I, expe I expected the opposite. I expected it to be a bit laid back. I expected it to have this golden glow behind the sound. Um, it was not that. It was, as I say, dynamic and punchy and almost in my face. And, and um, um, some things I liked about that, but this uh, harshness, I didn't. And I was quite honestly stunned. And one of the first, one of the thoughts that um, went through my head was, did I make a mistake with AccuFace? Because it's been two years since I last heard the last AccuFace that we had in the store. And at the time, it sounded fine. And it was cold at, at the time. It wasn't even broken in. This uh, integrated amp has 150 hours, and that part of that frequency, I didn't enjoy. So I left it on, uh, went away, did some paperwork, and then came back about an hour later. Um, substantially different, substantially. And, and I don't know if just the fact that it needs more break-in or it just likes a, a longer settling time than 30 minutes. Could certainly be that. So second part of the uh, listening under the good, now it's smoother. It doesn't have that harshness anymore. Uh, all of that was gone. I played exactly the same cuts. Um, I kept the volume exactly the same. Nothing has changed. Um, and it's certainly not bias confirmation because, as I said, I, at first blush, was not uh, impressed in terms of the, the slight harshness. And then now it was quite a bit better. And now it had all of the other characteristics and my first impression that I liked, but even more. So, for example, I, I, earlier I said the soundstage was good. Now it extended beyond the speakers. It didn't do that before. Now it was clearly evident that it extended beyond the speakers. Depth was substantially improved, much better than previously. I, I could easily hear layering, especially with uh, recordings, early RCA recordings uh, that, that were done simply, so you could, it did not a lot of mixing, certainly no overproduction, you could easily hear those layers of depth. It was just so much better pronounced, it wasn't just a little bit, and it certainly wasn't my imagination. Let me cut this part and just, well, interrupt this first and just go into some of the things that uh, AccuFace is known for, because this is all under the good. Uh, AccuFace was started in 1972 as a company called Kensonic. Ten years later, they changed the name to AccuFace. So basically, the company's been around on the market for 51 years. Very, very few companies can say that. And not only has it been uh, 51, not only is it 51 years old, the company has continued uninterrupted under the same ownership for all these years, which is quite an achievement. Uh, the other thing that AccuFace is well known for is their attention to detail and quality control. They, they are probably one of the leading manufacturers as far as reliability is concerned. I've heard lots of people talk about uh, issues with almost any other brand. But I've never heard anybody tell me anything about AccuFace in terms of reliability issues. Now, that could also be that the sample size is not that big. After all, AccuFace is not exactly the most well-known product in North America, specifically in Canada, and there aren't a lot of products out there. But still, I would have heard, and I, I've never really heard anything as far as reliability issues are concerned. But the people that I do know who have owned or continue to own AccuFace have nothing but great things to say. They all love their time with the product. If they still own it, they'll tell you that they'll never part with it. Um, just really strong loyalty, if you will. Um, the other thing that's really good about AccuFace is that the resale value tends to be pretty good. I would say average to good. It, it, uh, I wouldn't say that it is the best. And again, part of it might be because it's not as well known in North America, but certainly consistently it sells and it sells fairly quickly and for pretty good pricing. The reputation also uh, of uh, AccuFace is that uh, it is well designed, so it measures really well 
not only does it sound great, but it also measures very well. There are lots of products out there that um, measure terribly, but sound very appealing to lots of people. Single-ended uh, products, for example, uh, power amplifiers that measure terribly, but sound very lush and very beautiful to many, many people. Not with AccuFace. If you um, pull out any reviews where they do measurements, you will see that they always measure very, very well. Um, I love the construction. Uh, if you watch the uh, unboxing video, I go into some of the details of the construction. It's well made. The knobs feel very luxurious. Um, the, the, the input knob clicks so smoothly, but there's a definite stop, so you feel the, that you, you have the sense that it's very well made. All the buttons have a very good positive switch to it. Um, the, the lid in the front, it's just very, very well done. I love that the finish, you don't see any kind of rippling, you don't see any kind, sometimes you will get some high-end products where you can tell that the powder coating or the uh, uh, coating that they apply on the top is not all that well done. You can see little spots where it's not completely finished, but it passed QC. Now with AccuFace, I don't see anything at all. And if you look through the vent covers, you can see how well they're made. Uh, I also said in the uh, unboxing video, at some point when I get a chance, I'll take the top cover off and, and we'll do some pictures of it as well. So these are some really good things. I love the fact that the connections are really well done as well. When you when you push the connector, uh, your, your RCAs or balance ends, uh, uh, balance connectors in, they, they, they have a very good solid feel. They're not loose, they're not overly tight, they just feel right. All the connections have a cover so that when you're not using it, the cover just finishes, if you will, the connector. You don't see bare connections on the back, which I've never seen on other products before. It's just a nice little touch. It's not a shorting connector. Um, uh, uh, it's just a connector that ju uh, it's just a cover that that, that f uh, closes, if you will, that c hides the connectors, and also the remote control. Nice chunky remote. The font is very legible, even to my uh, horrible eyes. I can easily see. And when you t uh, touch the buttons, they're um, really. It has a really good tactile feel. The other thing I want to show you. Um, so uh, the remote control. Uh, comes with the batteries outside, so you have to put the batteries in. So when I looked at the back, I could see that there were four screws, and I thought, oh no, you're kidding me. I gotta take screws out to put batteries in? This is ridiculous. So I started taking the screws off, and the screws are in there really, really tight. And these are tiny little screws. These are using the jeweler kind of screwdrivers, the eyeglass, and I'm twisting and twisting, and finally get it off. And I noticed that the uh, little bolt <coughs> at the tip is treated so that when it goes in, it doesn't want to come out, uh, which is good from a manufacturing standpoint. Uh, but I was thinking, this is crazy. Why would they make it so hard to take the bolts out? Uh, and then I realized that that's not how you put the batteries in. At the bottom is where you put the batteries in. Now, you have to forgive me, it was like three o'clock in the morning, so I wasn't completely awake yet. Most remote controls, you have a little panel, you push down and it slides out, and it's made of plastic, and Eventually, at some point, that little door will crack. Not this. This is so well done. Again, something little sim as simple as that, but with a lot of thought in terms of how they executed it. Okay, so let's get to the sound because I'm sure that's what you want to know. As I said, after I let it warm up for another hour, everything changed. Um, everything that was already good was substantially better. The soundstage now got way beyond the speakers. The depth layering was much, much, much better. Um, the punchiness was still there, but now with meat, as opposed to just the punch with some sort of a harshness or leading edge was a little bit too harsh maybe. Now you've got the body, and so the harshness has gone away. I didn't notice any harshness whatsoever, and I played some, as I will mention a bit uh, later, some, some crazy recordings. Um, from basically upper bass on up, there's really nothing uh, to criticize. Everything that I wanted out of this integrated app, it delivered and in spades. Now, not only is it a, a great audiophile product, it was also it also is a music lover's product. Regardless of almost anything that I played, it consistently delivered the goods. If it's a great performance. It will do that. I was listening to Pavarotti singing Nessun Dorma, and it gave me goosebumps. Um, I was listening to a bunch of classical pieces, Hungarian Rhapsody Number no. 2, with so much um, emotion. 
it, it, it just was so, it just drew me in, I, I guess, I, uh, easiest way to, to, to explain it. I thought I had virtually everything the Beatles ever released. And I'm sure I have this, I just probably haven't played it yet. Under the anthology series, um, the cut Blackbird, you have Paul McCartney on the right. Uh, he's uh, mixed that way. And he starts off talking. Um, he's asking the uh, uh, producer if he could turn whatever it is as he's hearing off. I think he said speakers. Uh, he can hear it in his uh, headphones. And then he's having a bit of conversation with the producer. And it sounds like you are there. It sounds that like uh, 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 Paul McCartney and John Lennon are there in front of you. And when they start playing, not only did I get goosebumps, I started tearing up, thinking, oh my God, this is what a really good system does. It transports you to the time of the recording, and now you can actually hear two giants, Paul and John, alive in my room. I, I could not get over that magic. And if you like the Beatles at all, you've got to hear this particular track. It, it was sublime. Um, so, and I can keep going on as far as the, the good is concerned. There's um, um, micro dynamics are very, very good. Macro in some ways is even better. Um, Punchy in the mid-range, I mentioned that already. Like a really good electrostatic, but with meat and with bones. Upper bass, snare drums, cymbals, very punchy, very quick, very visceral. All right, so let's get to the bad because that's what you want to hear. Um, the mid and deep bass is not as articulate, not as refined, not as powerful, not as punchy um, as the rest of the range. Uh, now, I want to give it a bit more time and see if it develops a bit more. I also want to try other speakers because, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm using I was using the Wilson Sasha V's, and the Sasha V's have a difficult load, about 2.36 ohms at 82 hertz, um, and it 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 may be that this integrated amplifier is just not up to it at that low impedance. Certainly possible because there were times I was looking up and I saw that the meters every so often were touching or coming very close to the red line. So it's fair, po certainly possible that uh, I was playing certain kinds of music, um, uh, uh, shall we say, a little bit too rambunctiously. Uh, now having said that, I've certainly played music at least at that level, if not higher, with other integrated amplifiers. So this is not uncommon for me. Um, so as I say, mid and deep bass, not the most articulate, not the most controlled, not the most detailed as I've heard. The punch is there, but it's just not quite as clear and resolved as uh, I'm used to. Um, I'll give you some examples of music that I was uh, playing as well. Uh, Billie Eilish, anything that you play with Bill Billie Eilish, there's a lot of bass and deep bass in there. Beyonce, um, Cashmere by Marcin, I swear I would never use that for, for clients as far as demos is concerned, but I chose this one simply because, again, this particular cut has a lot of overproduced bass, and I wanted to, s to see if I could hear it. And it was there, it just wasn't as convincing. The reason the guys play this cut all the time, and that's why I ban it, is because when you play this cut in the same room with the same speakers, with other electronics, it shakes the room, it shakes the pant legs, and the client says, okay, I'm buying the system. I mean, it happens all the time. Um, ACDC played a bunch, and it was good. It just wasn't amazing, especially when I consider all the other types of music that I played previously. Um, some of the other um, bads, there's no DAC included for this price. There's no streamer included in this price, and there's no phono included in this price. Now, why is this important? On the one hand, you can make the argument that, well, you're only buying what you need to buy. You're not paying for something you're never gonna use. Very true. However, at this price, there's a lot of competition, and a lot of them include some of these things, if not all of these things. Uh, as I mentioned, the price is 20,000 Canadian, about roughly 19,000 uh, US dollars. So not exactly uh, uh, cheap, right? I certainly feel that it's worth every penny, especially when you consider that the sound is so good with certain kinds of music. Ugly, so let's get to the ugly. I, I, I had, 
what I'm going about what I'm, what I'm about to say is probably not correctly in the ugly category, but I figured well, it might be, and that's the competition at uh, twenty thousand dollars. Now remember, I'm a dealer. So I'm telling you exactly how I feel. You know, if I was trying to hide this, I wouldn't say this. There's a lot of competition. The Macintosh uh, MA12000, the hybrid tube uh, preamplifier section, solid state power amplifier section, it's rated at 350 watts into 8, 4, and 2 ohms. So uh, it's at least as powerful as the AccuPhase. Again, it has the tube section. It has a built-in DAC, a very good built-in DAC. It has a very good phono stage built in. Um, uh, so, and it also has the meters as well. So, uh, um, that is tough competition. The smaller Macintosh, the MA9500, it's a solid state amplifier, uh, integrated amp. It's 300 watts per channel, also has a built in DAC, also has phono stage. And that, uh, so the, the 12,000 is $15,000, the MA9500 is $12,000. So substantially less expensive. Now, part two of this video, at some point I'm going to do comparisons and so we can see how it stacks up sonically. Um, D'Agostino, a progression integrated amplifier, it's um, 20,950, so call it 21,000 US dollars. Um, it's 200 watts per channel into 8 ohms, 400 watts into 4 ohms. Uh, into 4 ohm load, it's basically more powerful than the AccuPhase into, two, uh, into 8 ohms. It's not as powerful. but the D'Agostino, when I play it through the uh, Sashes, I get that bass, I get that punch uh, into that low frequency. So again, uh, uh, I'm going to look forward to comparing all these different products and then uh, come back to you with uh, additional information. So here's my conclusion. No product is perfect. I mean, I have never come across a product where I thought, okay, this is perfect. There, there's no such thing. For the price in Canada, $20,000, sonically for most of the music that I played, superb. Especially anything that's acoustic, jazz, classical, uh, vocals, anything like that, absolutely superb. It almost has the kind of, the best qualities of tubes without the weaknesses of tubes. It has that kind of performance. Um, it doesn't do as well. Now it's not doing, it doesn't do terribly, don't get me wrong. If it, we're talking about a scale of one to 10, 10 being unbelievable and, and, and one being give it back to the dealer, I would say with uh, hard rock, metal, um, with uh, very challenging uh, deep bass kind of music, it's probably more like a six and a half, seven. And then the rest would be like an eight, eight and a half. Okay, so it's, it's not like it's so far behind, it's not. It's just maybe half a step back, one step back compared to the rest of the uh, 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 range when it comes to uh, specifically difficult, challenging recordings. Um, but in terms of build quality, in terms of luxuriousness, in terms of pride of ownership, in terms of just everything else, this is certainly um, as good as I know, as good as I've seen and uh, I would not hesitate to recommend to anybody looking for <coughs> an integrated amplifier in this price range to compare it and check it out. It may well be that for the kind of music you listen to, uh, for the kind of speakers that you own, uh, this may be literally perfect. Again, we'll, we'll, we'll see more when I get a chance to do a comparison. Happy New Year. May you and your family have the blessings, health, and joy that you deserve. And thank you again for watching us, for supporting us, because when you watch us, YouTube pays us. And I match those uh, funds and we donate it to charity. So you're doing your part, we're doing our part. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.